Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. Today looking back at the Formula Renault three and a half series. It was a single seater series that ran from 2005 to 2017 in the middle of the ladder on the way to Formula One at the top. And a lot of Formula One drivers have a year or two in Formula Renault on their CV. So remember to subscribe and like the video, follow me on Twitter and with that said, let's begin. 2005, Robert Kubitzer. God King Kubica was champion at this level in 2005, beating Adrian Valles, despite retiring from the last two races at Monza. It was an interesting field in 2005, but also contained the likes of Marcus Winkelhock, Will Power and Simon Pagano. Kubica won four races that year for Epsilon Euskadi. Kubica won four races that year for Epsilon Euskadi on his way to his Formula 1 debut a year later with BMW Sauber, but also tested for Renault in 2005 after winning this series. Robert Kubica is still involved in Formula 1 and is a popular driver. 2006, Alex Danielson. While this man's career took a strange turn, he won the Formula Renault series in 2006 with Comtech Racing, beating Borja Garcia and Pastor Maldonado. And he looked to have a bright future ahead of him, but it did not work out like that. He would have a couple of appearances in AutoGP in 2007, Ferrari Scandinavia Challenge in 2009, what even is that? He'd raced in a few random series before seemingly giving up on motorsport and now drives a monster truck in Monster Jam. What the hell happened, Alex? 2007, Alvaro Parente. The Portuguese driver won the series in a particularly sparse year for quality drivers. Sebastian Vettel did race half the year, and would have probably won it if he had finished the season. But Alvaro Parente did win, beating Ben Hanley and Milos Pavlovic with Tech One Racing. You can see what I meant by sparse, although that isn't a knock against Alvaro Parente, who would move on to GP2 for a couple of years, winning a couple of races along the way, but never challenging for the title in that series. And with no Formula One drive presenting itself, he moved on to GT races, where he still is to this day. He's won a few events here and there, including the Bathurst 12 hour race in 2016, so not bad, but probably not what he wanted to be doing. 2008 Guido van der Gaard. Well, this driver did make it to Formula 1, but didn't half cock it up along the way. He won the 2008 title with P1 Motorsport, beating Julian Jaus and Fabio Carbone, and Guido would spend the next four years in GP2 and GP2 Asia with iSport, Adax, and Caterham. With five wins in those four years and always running at a pretty high level, he had already tested in Formula 1 with Spiker in 2007, as well as Force India in 2008 and Caterham in 2012, but got a full-time drive in 2013. But a full year of Caterham is a full year of driving around the back of the field, being a mobile chicane. But he impressed enough, or his money impressed enough, to get a test drive with Sauber in 2014. When a seat was free, it looked like Guido was going to take it, but Sauber went with Felipe Nazar and Marcus Ericsson instead leading to Guido filing a court case against them. It was a mess and Sauber ended up paying $16 million to end Guido's contract with the team, but making himself a pariah in the process. He has been racing in GT Racing, winning the European Le Mans series in 2016, and still races in the World Endurance Series with Team Netherlands. 2009, Bertrand Baguette. Mmm, Baguette. Well, Bertrand Baguette actually beat drivers I have heard of to the 2009 title. Ferrers Fauzi, Charles Peake and Jaime Alguaswari, I didn't say they were great drivers, but Baguette dominated with 5 wins for Draco Racing and moved on to IndyCar in 2010 but didn't really impress and has since mostly raced in Japan in the Super GT series, taking a single win at Suzuka in 2017, but 2019 was by far his best year, finishing 6th overall, it could only get better in 2020, eventually. 2010 Mikhail Alishin how the hell did Mikhail Alishin not get a Formula 1 drive? He won this title with Carlin, beating Daniel frickin' Ricardo, as well as Esteban Guerreri. He may have won by just two points, but beating Daniel Ricardo at any point in his career is a massive achievement. He'd have a few unsuccessful attempts at IndyCar with Schmidt Peterson, and has sort of bounced around GP2, Le Mans series and other GT events, but never reached the level he could have. Just another race car driver falling between the cracks and not reaching his potential. 2011 Robert Wickens Robert Wickens is a very decent driver who has had a long and mildly successful career 
and is hopefully well on the way to recovering from his horrifying IndyCar accident at Pocono in 2018. He won in 2011, beating John Eric Verne and Alexander Rossi. And he did get a Formula 1 test drive with the Marussia team that year, but he headed to DTM to take six wins in six years, racing for Mercedes and a best fourth overall in 2016. He moved on to IndyCar for 2018 with Schmidt Peterson and put in some good performances, with four podiums and a ninth place at the Indy 500. Not bad for a first attempt before his injury curtailed his season, and hopefully Robert Wickens will be back in 2020. 2012 Robin Frines. Robin Frines is a driver I rate very highly, and I like him a lot. He won in 2012 with Fortec Motorsport, beating Jules Bianchi, Sam Bird, and Antonio Felix da Costa. He raced part of a GP2 series with Hilmer, as well as testing for Sauber and Caterham in Formula 1 in 2013 and 2014, but the boat seemed to pass him by, and in 2015 he was racing in the Blanc Payne GT series for Audi. But he came back to single-seaters in Formula E, first with Amelin Aguri for a couple of seasons, before finding success with Virgin. Taking two wins in 2018 and 2019, he's also a regular on the DTM podium and doing pretty well. 2013, Kevin Magnussen. Finally, a driver who made it to Formula 1. K-Mag absolutely dominated Formula Renault 3.5 in 2013 with the Dams team, beating Stoffel van Dorn handily. He'd be racing for McLaren a year later, getting a podium on his debut, and really, it has been downhill ever since that race. McLaren got progressively worse over the year, and then he was dropped in favour of Fernando Alonso. He was going to stand in for him at the Australian Grand Prix in 2015, but an engine problem meant he didn't start. He joined Renault in 2016, only scoring 7 points and 2 points finishes over the year, before spending the last 3 years with Haas. He scores points and does okay, but I think his stint at the top level is nearly over, and it's a shame as he had a lot of promise to begin with, another young talent squandered by McLaren. 2014, Carlos Sainz Jr. Did anyone call how good Carlos Sainz Jr. would be at this point in his career? I certainly didn't, but he is a damn good racer. He beat Pierre Gasly to this title and went straight on to Toro Rosso as a Red Bull backed driver. He'd score fairly regular points with Toro Rosso before being loaned to the Renault team midway through 2017. He'd stay for 2018 and improve over the year, ending it 10th overall, before a move to McLaren in 2019 announced his arrival at the top end of the grid, getting his first podium in Brazil and ending the year 6th overall, best of the rest, but ahead of both Red Bull Toro Rosso drivers Gasly and Albon. And he is just going to get better with age. One of the best. Watch this space. 2015 Oliver Rowland. Oliver Rowland took this title with ease in 2015. With eight race wins, he had a healthy lead over Mathieu Vaxivier and future Formula 2 champion Nick De Vries. He finished third overall in Formula 2 in 2017 behind Charles Leclerc and Artem Markolov. And he has been doing well with the Nissan team in Formula E over the last couple of years with a couple of podiums and some good consistent performances. Plenty of ability but really needs to start winning races if he wants to make a name for himself. 2016 Tom Dillman A journeyman racer, Tom Dillman is the man you bring in when you need a replacement. He's raced in Super Formula in Japan for a year in 2018 but only scored 4 points and has been in and out of Formula E until he had a full drive with Neo, but didn't score any points over the 2018-2019 series. I don't know what his plans were for 2020, but I think his career is fizzling out, so probably GT racing of some kind. He has not been on a podium since winning the World Series Formula V8 three and a half series, and I don't see it happening anytime soon. 2017 Pietro Fittipaldi, and the final champion is Pietro Fittipaldi, who seemed to be a future star at one point. He's had links with the Haas team for a while now, but he's yet to transition to the pinnacle of motorsport. But since winning this series, he has failed to impress in IndyCar with a part season with Dale Coyne, and he's had a pretty poor season in DTM in 2019 in an Audi. But he was announced as a reserve driver for Haas in 2020, and will probably be making his debut at some point in the future in Formula 1, just like Grandpa Emerson did. So there are the champions of the Formula Renault V8 3.5 series. A good list with some top level drivers. Do I miss the series? A little. It was always competitive with lots of new up-and-comers going through it, but there are other single-seater series out there to watch and this series was a bit hit or miss in the success levels of its champions. 
But this is a script that for me will always be remembered because whilst halfway through it my girlfriend's waters broke and my son was on his way. So this is a pretty special moment for me. Thank you anyone who has subscribed or made it this far through this video. Please consider subscribing if you haven't. Leave your memories of Formula Renault in the comments below and most importantly from all my family, have a good one.